Welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray for 3DS Max. This video will show you how to create basic V-Ray materials, refine them with bitmaps, use material presets, and import and edit Chaos Cosmos materials. To get the most out of this video, click on the link in the description to download our project files. This way, you can practice along in your own time. Now, let's jump in. As you'll see, V-Ray for 3DS Max has a lot of different materials you can use. They're super versatile and can be tweaked in many ways for different visual effects. The most commonly used one is the V-Ray material. It can imitate many surfaces like plastic, metal, glass, and more. All you have to do is adjust some settings. We'll start with the material for a vase, give it a new name to keep things organized, and assign it to the vase. To select objects from your scene, you can use the frame buffer, right click, and choose Select Object. Now let's explore some frequently used settings, starting with the diffuse color. This lets you pick the color of your material's surface. The reflect and refract colors, which we'll dive into soon, also affect this color. I'll set the diffuse to black because we're going to make this a glass material and glass doesn't have a diffuse color. Next, we've got the reflex setting, which determines how much reflection the material has and its reflection color. Black means the material isn't reflective, and gray makes it more reflective. Making it white gives the material lots of reflection. Generally, grayscale values work well for most materials, but sometimes you might want to use a color. This can be handy when creating materials like gold or car paint, Notice how the reflections on the surface are super sharp. We can control this with the glossiness setting. A value of one gives a perfect mirror reflection and lower values make blurry reflections. I'll leave it at one for now. Depending on the material you're creating, you might want to adjust this. If you want to make your material even more reflective, like chrome, Unlock the Fresnel IOR and up its value. This setting affects Fresnel reflections. I'll leave this at the default 1.6. Okay, time to turn this into a glass material. We do this by changing the refraction, which determines the amount of refraction in the material. Any value above zero will enable refraction. Making this parameter white will make the material fully refractive. Like with reflection, there's a glossiness parameter here too, controlling the sharpness of refractions. A value of one gives perfect glass-like refraction, and lower values create blurry refractions, good for making frosted glass. You can give the glass a color tint by adjusting the fog color parameter. It specifies the attenuation of light as it passes through the material. This helps you show that thick objects look less transparent than thin objects. Note that the effect of the fog color depends on the actual size of the objects, unless you've enabled the fog system unit scaling. Use the depth parameter to control how strong the fog effect is. High values decrease the effect, making the material more transparent, and smaller values increase the effect, making the material more opaque. Finally, let's check out how to use Bump to add surface details. I'll add a simple noise map into the Bump slot. Bump maps create the illusion of depth and texture on the surface. This noise size is probably too big, so let's make it smaller. Bump maps are usually grayscale images where white makes details look raised and black makes them appear recessed. Now we can see it, but the bump is too intense, so let's lower its multiplier. So, using bump maps and procedural maps, you can add realistic details to any material. 
Now that you understand the main settings and how they change the shader, let's explore a different way of working with materials. I'll create another V-Ray material and give it a new name, just like we did earlier. Navigate to the Presets dropdown, and you'll find preset values for commonly used materials like glass, ceramic, rubber, plastic, and different metals like gold, silver, and chrome. These presets have settings that balance speed and realism. They're awesome for general use or as a starting point for further tweaking. Remember that metal material presets use roughness and metalness to set the reflection glossiness. Roughness is the same as glossiness, but it uses reversed values. For example, if glossiness at one gives very sharp reflections, roughness at one will give a completely blurred result. If you're creating a metal material from scratch, you can switch to using roughness from the BRDF menu. Check out our blog post titled Understanding Metalness for a deeper understanding of this process. All right, now let's create another material for the countertop, but this time we will use textures to determine some of the parameters. To load the texture, navigate to Maps, V-Ray Bitmap, load the texture, and connect it to the Diffuse slot. After the texture is connected, any color selected in the Diffuse will be ignored. Now we can see the wood texture on the countertop, but it looks a bit flat. Let's add some reflections. Now the entire surface is very reflective and everything looks sharp. Instead of lowering the glossiness parameter, let's use a texture to make the result more varied. Duplicate the previously created V-Ray bitmap node using Shift and drag and load the glossiness map. You can create a new V-Ray bitmap node or copy an existing one to save time, then plug it into the glossiness slot. Now the result is more subtle and blurred. Finally, let's duplicate the V-Ray bitmap one more time. This time we'll load a normal map, which we'll use in the bump slot. When you find shader assets online, they often come with a normal map. Before connecting it, Add a V-Ray Normal Map node, choose Normal Map, and then connect it to the bump slot. Now just boost the strength and it's ready to go. A fantastic place to find materials is Chaos Cosmos. Cosmos is a 3D asset library packed with various shaders like concrete, a wide range of fabrics, and many more. To use them, just click the download icon and drag and drop into the viewport. If you have objects in your scene without proper UVs, you can use the V-Ray Tri-Planner texture. It quickly assigns bitmaps and other 2D textures to objects that don't have suitable UV coordinates, projecting the texture on the X, Y, and Z axis. When importing materials from Chaos Cosmos, you can enable triplanar mapping, and it'll be done automatically. But let's see how it can be done manually when creating materials from scratch.
add a V-Ray triplanar map and connect it to the mapping source of the bitmaps. Then, adjust the scale of all textures at the same time. Since it's connected to all the maps, they will all be adjusted simultaneously. Let's import another material from the Chaos Cosmos library. This time, let's go for some marble for the countertop. Cosmos materials are ready to use as they are, but you can tweak them to better fit your scene. Just like any other material, you can modify them and change their look in a few easy steps. For instance, you can add a color correction node and adjust the hue, saturation, or brightness of the diffuse. In this case, I'll make the marble less saturated. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. By now, you should have learned how to make a V-Ray material from scratch. Use presets and bitmaps to customize your shaders and import and edit Chaos Cosmos materials. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos from our beginner series, or our blog and documentation for more tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you soon!